This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. He said, The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. As uh, I begin today, I am just, um, my heart is really heavy for the things that have happened in our country over the last several hours in El Paso and in Dayton, Ohio. And um, let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for our nation, the United States of America. We ask, Lord, that you would be with those who have lost loved ones in Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso, Texas. And today, Lord, we pray for peace peace which passes all our understanding. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Verse 15 of Luke 12 says this, And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of evil, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. This one verse... um, makes me uncomfortable. It makes me feel guilty. It makes me feel like, what sort of hope do I have to relinquish myself from all my possessions? You know, our country is driven by consumerism. I don't have to explain that to you. Um, If I were to ask you to raise your hand, how many people here have too many things in their home that they don't need? I think everybody's hand would go up. For those of you who are, let's say, over 70, you don't have to raise your hand. Um, Do you remember a a, a time when, or your parents lived in a day when they had Dean Sod huts, they had no electricity, they had no running water, they had very few possessions, but there was something different about that age. In that time, people would go over to each other's houses on Sunday, unannounced. They would eat together. They would play cards together. They would do things as a community, things that were missing today. Could it be that there's a link to abundance of possessions and our sense of relationships and community? Um, My mom died 15 years ago. My dad died just this year, and uh, he left us an inheritance. Um, Not so much money which would have been nice, but he left a lot of stuff. And uh, it's just my sister and I, and so we had to divide that stuff. My sister right now has her spare room, her downstairs, and her garage full of my dad's stuff. All things that I'm sure my dad thought was very important while he was alive. I, however, like uh, Goodwill. So I've been... (laughs) But I still, my dad, I'll give you an example. He had uh, 16 toolboxes. I have some. If you would like them, please let me know. (laughs) 
He had <clears throat> 12 cast iron toy cars from World War II. Okay. Um, and uh, my favorite one is that he has bags of bread ties that he saved. So we have a lot of stuff, and I'm sure we, as we all do, we think it's so important, but in our country we have this uh, disease, it's called affluenza. We are very affluent, and if you've ever been out of the country, you will certainly find that we live differently than the rest of the world. And I'm upset that I've caught this disease. I, I, I just can't seem to free myself from it. I, I still think that if I had a five-speed black eight-valve uh, eight Camaro, I would be happy, right? I, I, but I know that's not true, and I'll tell you why, where that comes from. When I was 16 years old, my dad, my, my dad was a doctor, and so we had, we had uh, many more things than a lot of kids my age. And in fact, when I was 16, I was the first one in my class to get a car. Okay, and here's how it happened. Um, my birthday was coming up, and my next door neighbor, Be Becky Sharp, her parents owned the Sharp Chevrolet dealership, right? So she comes up to me a week before, and she says, I heard your dad uh, bought you a car. I said, really? For your birthday, yeah. And I think it's that shiny new Camaro that was on the floor, and I'm like, oh, which was my favorite car. So I had to keep it under my hat for a week, and it was just killing me, and so my birthday came, and, you know, hurry up, get through the gifts, and, you know, the cake, and so uh, there was one last little gift, and Dad says, open it. And I opened it, and there's Chevy keys. So I ran to the garage. He said, it's in the garage. And I opened the door, and there in the garage was a brand-new, shiny Chevy Chevette. <laughs> Have you ever seen a Chevette? They don't make them anymore. And, and <clears throat> here I am, 16 years old. I've got a brand-new car, and I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Jesus warns, be on guard against all kinds of greed. And we live in a culture where there's a lot of greed. So today, what do you think? Is there really a danger, an inherent danger for us having too many possessions or being obsessed with greed? Is it just disappointment? Is it... Uh, stress that we have because of all these things, or is it something deeper, something else more critical? Well, here's what I want to suggest. Um, my family and I have been to uh, mission trips in Mexico, in particular, into the Mayan world, where they, like those of you who are over 70, remember there is no electricity, no running water. They subsistence farm, kind of like it was here a hundred and some years ago, and they have very little other than the things that are on their back. They have no drive-throughs, they have no deliveries, they, they are living off what God has given them. And my boys, three boys, I've taken them with us on these trips, and so I text them this week and I asked them, I said, when you think of the people who live in poverty, what do they have that we don't have? And here's what they said, respectively time, relationships, and community. Now what are some things that are we're lacking in our culture, in our day and age? Time, relationships, and community. Could our desire for stuff, abundance of possessions, be hurting our relationships to our loved ones, to our neighbors, and ultimately to God? So what are we to do? I keep thinking it's a lack of faith. If I, just, if I could just let go of those things and honor the things of God and the kingdom of God, but what are we to do? We're not made for hoarding or consuming or collecting things just for ourselves. Maybe, maybe if I knew tomorrow that my life would be taken from me, maybe that might be enough to jolt me into understanding that there are more important things in life, things from above. Um, Teresa and I have uh, a friend named Craig. Uh, we actually met uh, Craig and Diane on our honeymoon 
Um, my parents gave us a cruise to, where was it? Like somewhere in the Bahamas there. And uh, it's been a long time. And uh, we uh, were asked to be on this um, game show on the cruise. Uh, like the honeymoon show, you know, where they, they have three couples up there and you try to answer these questions. And so we got up on stage and we said we were from Minnesota because I was going to school there at the time in, in St. Paul. And uh, we got last, but um, this uh, other couple noticed that we were from Minnesota. And so as we were walking down, they, they invited us over, Craig and Diane, and we got to be friends. So after the cruise, we started to get together and, and uh, became good friends and even took a vacation dip together uh, to Wisconsin, right? That yeah, was horrible. But um, Craig came over to our house one day and announced that uh, he and Diane were getting divorced. And uh, we helped them through that. And then as the years went on, we went to South Dakota. I went to be a pastor there. And... And uh, I got a call from Craig saying, um, I'm getting married again, and I'd like you to do the wedding. So I came to uh, Minneapolis. This was my very first wedding. I'd never done one before. And it was on uh, Miniha Miniha no, what is it? Minnetonka, right? Minnetonka Country Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, married him, and then um, kind of lost track. You know how you do that with people? You lose track of them. And, he went on and he uh, moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, and the years went by, decades went by, and then one day I, I, I received a phone call from him, and just out of the blue, and I said, who's this? And it's Craig. I said, Craig, wow, I haven't heard from you. How are things going? And he told me a little bit about his life, and, and then I said, well, why? I'm just wondering why you're calling. And he said, uh, did, you, did you see... Uh, that Airways Flight 1549 that went down in the Hudson. Do you remember that? It's been a few years. A uh, plane went down in the Hudson. He said, I was on that plane. And I said, really? And he said, uh, as we were hitting the water, he said, I was sure that I was going to die. And he said, now I'm just calling people who mean something to me in my life, who I want to say I appreciate you. And he said, I love you, man. And I said, I love you, too. I wonder if Craig found out something that I have no answer for. Jesus warns us and says, Be on guard against all kinds of greed, for life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. So here's my question. What do Jesus' words today say to you? Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, show us the things from above, the things that matter in life and give us meaning. Help us in our struggle against the abundance of possessions. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.